Welcome back to week number two of Dream League season five. I'm here with two of the champions of the Kiev Major. Welcome, Shiva. Thank you. I'm looking very much forward to the finals, just like everybody here, I would assume. Over the last four years, Yareen van der Heiden, better known to her fans as Shiver, has built a reputation as one of Dota's preeminent commentators. I'm dominating the panel here. As one of the few women in the scene, she worked hard to win over fans with her deep knowledge of the game, relatable personality, and sense of humor. But last year, it was in her life outside of the game that she faced her biggest challenge yet. It's been a really challenging year for you as a family. It has been very challenging, yeah. I believe you were at the appointment for where the they first, first yep. said the words. Yep. Can you walk us through what happened that day? Oh, we were in this very small office and then the doctor came in and he sat down. And uh, he did beat about the bush. He said, you have breast cancer. Yeah, that was a, that was a tough one to take. Everything just changes in an instant. Yeah, yeah. it's just, just, just like that. When I told people, I was still sitting with the doctor and he had to sometimes go out because obviously a lot needs to be arranged in terms of which doctors I'm gonna talk to and when and what and stuff. So on hindsight, I think that's a, a tactic so that he gives us some time to just, you know, breathe and think about it and let it actually sink in. And uh, that's when I WhatsApped uh, Owen and my friends and family. I called her, I, I, I asked her what I could possibly do, but she didn't know either because it's just, you know, stuff, a diagnosis just gets sprung on you and you're like... It took me a couple of days, obviously, to accept it more myself. Actually, my first reaction was to not go public at all. It's like, well, you know, cancer, nobody talks about cancer ever. When she got the diagnosis, she was already very concerned with her fans, and she didn't know exactly if she wanted to tell. I know, I was always one that's very difficult to accept help. Uh, and that's actually a big thing, because I'm doing everything by myself. I live, I live by myself before. I don't need anybody else to, to help me out with that. And of course, m myself and my other sister, we were like, the more support, the better. I actually had a conversation about it with, uh, with my older sister. She said, you've, accept you've allowed people to be there for you when you were having good times and when you were on your best. Why not allow them to also be there for you when you're at your worst and when you're heading for bad times? And that was actually the reason that I decided, well, that's kind of true. The whole Dota community rallied around her the outpouring of support was enormous when she got all those letters and just the care packages. It was just great because it was so much more than we could have given her, you know? Yeah, and she deserved that. Treatment started shortly after, uh, already uh, two or three weeks later. Uh, she got she got it postponed for a week more because she wanted to do an event, <laughs> which is totally crazy. It's her way to deal with stuff, and, and it's nice, it's, it's good to see that because she, she hasn't lost her drive over, over this, this whole ordeal. After I got the diagnosis and like a couple of days afterwards, I remember at some point I went into the family WhatsApp, it's like, well, my first, like, this is my schedule, my first chemo is then and then. And my brother was the first to reply, I'll come with you. I think the appointment was at 8.30, 9.30, somewhere in the morning. And, and when, I, when I pressed the button... Um, in, beforehand, it was just something theoretical uh, that was about to happen, but, but nothing concrete. Uh, I, I think that was, for me, also the moment uh, where I realized uh, that, it, that things were going to change. I remember my brother coming into the door and... I don't know, I just broke uh, because, yeah, it was just a, I don't know, a friendly face at a, at, a, at a time where I didn't really have any, like, I didn't feel like I had anything to look forward to. 
we, we, we didn't say anything to each other when she opened. Uh, she teared up, I teared up, uh, we, hold, we held each other. There, there's so little you can do as a family um, that being there is, is basically it. You know, my brother is not a very emotional person, or at least uh, not emotional, open person. He was, I don't know, uh, always the strong brother type of thing. So um, seeing him then made me break down and just uh, cry a little bit before he walked on. We were a little bit late because of it, but the nurses were fine with that. Hello. Hello. What made the first chemo very difficult was basically you know that from that point onward you're going to be sick, and not because of the cancer, but because of the chemo. They used to say you have to stay in bed all day, you can't do anything, but nowadays doctors say go for walks. So when I would take care of her after chemo, we would go walk in the park about three times a day, and the walking would actually help her feel less nauseated. So it was a great relief, I think. Zo mooi is het om ze nou even wat beest te laten praten. Nou, hè? Dutch people are very sober. We don't say I love you every day, or even every week, or even every year. We're very non-emotional, I guess. You don't really talk about things very often, or at least you did. You you wouldn't generally. We started walking for the the physical part of it, and um, yeah, and one thing leads to another, and um, we talked about everything. Oh, um, ja. En wellicht zelfs makkelijker, omdat je niet naar elkaar kijkt. Nee, dat klopt. Ach, deze omgeving leent zich ook wel voor, toch? Ja. Ik bedoel, je leeft meer mee met de ander. Ja. En dat is, dat is denk ik wel wat het doet. Ja, dat is op zich, dat, ja, dat is mooi dat dat kan. Ja, en, vind ik um, ook. Ja. We see each other more often. We talk more. We let each other know more about what's going on in our lives. My family is, is definitely, we're, we're closer than what we were before. Hey, Mark. Hello. Hello. Hi, Ik had wel zin in wat, uh, wat hartigs. Oh, oh. It's nice to talk English for our own sake, such as... Uh... Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 speak Dutch, speak Dutch. There's, it's there's better. Gonna... Because then when the video goes out and it has translations, everyone's like, oh, well, Owen understands the Dutch. You know, <laughs> <laughs> we keep speaking Dutch. <laughs> How has the relationship with Owen been a support for her and for your family? So meaningful. Oh, that we are in the shadow of what Owen means for her. Of course, she has her ups and downs. And he is always there when she's down. How did the walks to the hospital, how did you deal with that? Oh, it's so challenging. Having to walk. Oh, come on, be serious. Oh, all my life, I've been... Um, I like to sit on my chair and play PC games. Going outdoors was traumatic. Oh, <laughs> Jeez. Owen has been a lifesaver. Imagine having cancer and then having someone there to just help you with everything, help you emotionally, just be there for you, that, that, that's Owen. Were you never worried? Sure, but at the same time, I was more focused on the fact that it's, it's gonna be okay. You know, worrying, for me at least, wouldn't, doesn't really help anyone. I mean, would you rather that I was more visibly worried each time we went to the doctors? Surely not. Surely rather I was more optimistic. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. You know, it's a <laughs> horrible situation to be in, but it's not going to stop you doing everything that you, you want to do. And somehow you were sort of able to, to make sure that, that that didn't sort of put a dent in your attitude to, to working, to life, and just making sure that you were still able to get to, to where you wanted to be, where you, where you dreamed to be. So. You know, I'm really proud of you. Thank you. Did it really? You're lucky to have each other. We know. <laughs> <laughs> Even though she makes it look incredibly easy, there are definitely a, a lot of parts of, of going through something like cancer that are, are really not easy at all. And, you can't underestimate like how bad some of the, the periods have been for her and just how you know how well she's taken it as a trooper. Oh. 
How long does it last? A couple of minutes. Every hour? Every hour. Sorry. You know, I don't notice. I don't notice the, the whole situation anymore. Obviously, my hair sucks. I'm more chubby than what I used to be, but that's all fine. But the hot flashes, they just remind me every hour that I'm not healthy. And it's really annoying. But most of the time I can fairly ignore them and turn the fan on and I'm okay. That's pretty bad. But yeah. I'm fine now. My God, I'm so sorry. That's okay. It's like you're just trying to like get through the day and be normal and... Yeah, it's kind of... It's setting me back every time a little bit. Want ik denk dat dat op dit moment, op dit moment is de grootste strijd gewoon mentaal. Ja, 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 dat klopt. Elk pijnscheutje wat ik voel, denk ik van oh oh. Ja. Nou ja, en ik ben echt bang dat dat, dat eigenlijk nooit weggaat. Ook niet na vijf jaar, als je begrijpt wat ik bedoel. Nou, dat is geen goed vooruit. Nou ja, het punt is dat de percentage wordt steeds lager. Ja. Maar het gaat niet naar nul. Nee. En vandaar dat je denk ik, en dat maakt, dat maakt zo'n ziekte zo lastig. Hè? Want ik bedoel, als je kijkt als je je been breekt, is ook niet leuk. Nee. Maar op een gegeven moment is dat klaar, dan kan je weer gewoon lopen. Dan kan je weer verder, maar ja. dit soort dingen, is dat, dat heb je één keer gehad. En misschien komt het nooit meer terug, daar hoop je op. Ja. Maar uh, de, zeg maar de schrikmomenten, ja, ik ben, uh, die, zullen, die zullen eigenlijk wel blijven. Er zijn de opvliegers extra vervelend, want die brengen het elke keer weer terug. Ja, dat is zo. Die zorgen ervoor dat ik uh, niet ja, dat een post ik... kan gaan zonder het, eraan te denken. Nee, daarom. Dus dat, 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 dat maakt het extra lastig. Ja, ja inderdaad. Dat zoals we aan het begin zeiden, one step at a time. We like the shit out of you. I can't thank you enough for opening up yourself and your family and sharing your story with everyone because so many people have been touched by cancer or something in their lives and they feel so isolated and so alone. It is, it is something that you don't expect to go through obviously but there are, there are millions everywhere that have either a friend, a relative, themselves, and it's not just cancer. There's tons of diseases out there that most people don't even know about. And nobody really talks about them, ever. It's actually really weird, you know, everybody, you know, if you look at Facebook posts or any social media, everybody's always really happy. And, you know, they leave the bad stuff. And, you know, in a way that's good because that's not something you should focus on, but it's there. For most people, there is something Obviously, some have it worse than others, but there's something that's just, it sucks. <laughs> and obviously, going through this journey, I actually had so much support from everybody that the importance of sharing it actually came out. It was, yeah, a really big silver lining. I've been writing a blog, obviously, and I talk a lot about silver linings. And this is definitely the biggest one, I think. This was the first time, Owen, that you've seen the piece. And you obviously mean a lot, not just to her, but to her entire family. So what, what has this journey been like for you? Uh, it's, it, it's obviously been a long one and a hard one with, as I sort of said in the piece, uh, a lot of sort of downs that the community is not going to hear about. It's not going to be something that that you, you really want to talk about publicly. Obviously, she does an amazing job at uh, noting down everything in her blog. Um, but to, to sort of reflect on the, how it was back then to how it's now, it's, it, it's just been an amazing, amazing journey, I feel, for, for me and she in terms of the support that the, the community's given, uh, the people that work around us have given us as well, our, our colleagues, our, our friends, you know, it, 
we, in a sort of sense, and even though it's a horrible situation, we were fortunate enough to be in the position that we are, and, and there are a lot of other people out there who obviously uh, aren't as, as lucky in that sense, and, and I think as she says, you know, there, there is a lot of support out there for other people that I do hope people get, because there's, there's always someone that cares about you, no matter if it's you or, or if it's someone that you know that's suffering from cancer or any other disease, that there's always people out there who want to hear and, and, and are always there to help, and as I said, we, we're just surrounded by amazing people that that were, you know, our beck and call ready to help and ready to talk to either of us whenever we wanted. And I know that this was a uh, little over a year ago that you were diagnosed. Can you give us an update on where your health is today? Um, well, right now, the, the hot flushes still suck. Um, other than that, in December, I'm on a waiting list, and in December I hope to be getting um, my second boob. <laughs> so that will be a good one. Um, and then I'm on hormone therapy, which is basically a pill every day and a jab every month that removes any estrogen from my body. So that will go on for another four years. And uh, after that, it is basically roll the dice, <laughs> see if it comes back or not, and hope that it doesn't. And that the odds are in my favor, so that's at least something. Yeah, so it's not done yet, um, but it's definitely so much better than it was last year. I think something that you said that probably all of us can relate to is that you read about other people going through bad stuff and you see it happening to other people. And even if it happens to a friend or a family member, you can set it aside and walk away. You can't set it aside. No, it was actually really odd because, you know, I always have this doesn't happen to me kind of attitude. And that's in my, my entire family. Nobody in my family has uh, cancer, at least not that close to me. And, you know, it's always happening to other people. And then when it, does, when it did happen to me, it was really weird because all of a sudden you have all these possibilities. It's like, well, if that happens to me, everything can happen to me. So you're starting to be very paranoid. At least I had a very paranoid period at some point where I was in a car. It's like, well, you know, it never happened to me, but who knows? Uh, it was really crazy and it's, it's really the biggest reality check ever. Um, yeah. And now here you are, you've gathered some of your closest friends and everyone out in the bowl who is here for you too. What does that mean? It's been, you know, it's been so crazy because I feel very fortunate that I have a lot of close friends, uh, a lot of good people that can have my back. Like if I have a hot flash during a panel segment, you know, Nahaz will pick it up and talk uh, for a minute longer. No matter how many people say, stop talking Nahaz, he'll continue talking <laughs> until he sees that I put that fan down and I'm ready to go again. And that, you know, it's, it's something small, but it makes all the difference to me. And even if it's one person from around the world that sent me a message via either Twitter or any kind of social media thing, it might seem to, to them that it's a small thing, like, hey, if you ever need anything, let me know. And you know, somewhere you both know that you'll never need anything. But at the same time, saying that actually makes a big difference. Because just knowing that there's people there that have your back, like, it doesn't matter if it's a fan somewhere or, or a distant relative or anybody that's very close to you. It's just having it said out loud, I mean, it makes all the difference in the world. In a way, it's the only way that we can help carry this burden for you yeah. as much as we can. It's, I mean, it, it has made a difference. It's crazy how different it, it is. Uh, thank you for coming out to the Netherlands as well. Oh, was great. I love your family. Yeah, I, I'm sure they love you, but you did make every single one of them cry. Sorry. Sorry. I was I was initially very worried about this video because I knew that she made everybody cry. Not on purpose though. I didn't I swear it was not. But it could have been a piece about, you know, everybody say, you know, how sad it was and how teary it was, but thank you for making it for me at least feel very authentic because that video really felt like that is that is how it went, and that is how it is, and that is important. And I'm sure that I'm not the only one that is going through hard times. And I think it's very important that people that go through hard times, there's a lot of people that go through hard times, and it's okay to talk about, about, uh, to talk about it. And, you know, it's okay, for example, for me, it was very important to know 
it's okay to cry at some point as long as you can then move on, try to put it behind you and focus on some silver linings. There's always some as learn I've learned. I know I speak for everyone watching right now. We are so thankful that you're here today. You are This place would have looked very different otherwise. <laughs> you are a kick ass Dota host and caster. You are so good at what you do, and you're an incredible human being. Thank you. So, thank you. I know you mentioned just how important your coworkers have been, and I know that everyone on panel has been watching, Red Eye's been watching, and I know that their support has meant so much because we're a family, right, Paul? Absolutely, yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't have put it any better.